Hello everyone, I am Patricia from Kalamasil and I am here with you today to talk to you about refurbished weapons. The difference between our premium weapons and our refurbished weapons, it comes from the term to furbish, which is to prepare oneself for battle, to prepare one's equipment for battle, to polish. The first furbishing would be for premium products, but as it, for, for these ones, it just doesn't look quite as polished and that's why we refurbish them. We try to make them as look as nice as we can. Then we also have the veteran uh, class of weapon. They have a different color scheme and they have battle scars that we apply to them. Some of them will come from defects that we can basically retouch and rework. Oftentimes there's a bunch of defects that we just can't hide. So we just go with it. But we put more work into those ones than we put, for instance, into the refurbished ones. So one of the reasons why Kalamasil decided to sell refurbished products, for one thing, once the foam has expanded into the shape it currently holds, there's not really anything else to do with it apart from pretty much throwing it out. There's, it's very difficult to recycle, to reuse differently. And well, we're pretty proud of what we do and we're dedicated to selling quality products. They didn't make the cut. So instead of just throwing them out and wasting the material, you guys can have access to our stunning weapons at a reduced cost. Unlike, for instance, refurbished electronic products, refurbished Kalamasil foam products have never been pre-owned. When you buy a refurbished item, you are its first owner. Something that is essential to note is all refurbished items, all refurbished weapons are safe to use. They are just as safe as our premium products. That is something that we do not play around with at all. All premium, all refurbished, all veteran are equally safe to use in mock combat. So on refurbished weapons, there is a variety of different flaws that can, that can show up. So some of the more common ones will be caused by air bubbles that were tr either trapped inside the foam or literally broke the surface. So here is an example of one that's a little bit more obvious for the camera. A lot of them are more discreet. They often come up as clusters. Basically, it's literally just an air bubble that broke the surface. It has no impact on the quality of the foam underneath. It's purely cosmetic. They're just there. We will also see bubbles more often in more detailed products. Now it's important to note that not all visible air bubbles are considered refurbished. Now for instance, on this one here, uh, we have slightly larger bubbles. These are considered refurbished. Another weapon has little teensy tiny bubbles in the details. This is not refurbished. It's important to note because this is just the nature of foam itself and it's normal. Another example that will show up with air bubbles are the ones that don't break the surface but that stay trapped inside. Sometimes they'll tend to be a little bit bigger than the holes. Now here's another example that again is more obvious so that you can see clearly. These are bubbles that were created between the foam and the first layer of paint. Now these have been repaired. We can repair most of these, but they remain visible. The repair is literally injecting a little bit of foam, letting it take up that space. It's not an exact science. For instance, these ones, there's a little bit too much that got put in. Sometimes there's not quite enough and that will form a dent. They have no impact on the safety of the weapon. They have no impact on the quality of the foam underneath. Another type of defect will be wrinkling. It's typically caused by the foam underneath that doesn't properly adhere to the first layer of paint. Now again, this is a very obvious example. It's one that is fresh off the presses. If you can see here, we can see that there's wrinkling in that there's an outer layer like a film, which is the paint, that doesn't isn't touching the foam underneath. Now, when you press foam, there will be some, it's normal, it's foam, but sometimes you'll, you'll be able to see that, oh, there's a teensy tiny bit of air underneath there. For another example, we've got one here, it's, it's very small. You have to move the, the blade to see it, but this is one spot, like it's kind of forms a line where we have that wrinkling effect that's going on. It's important to note that, like I mentioned, this is not the same as squishing the foam. 
squishing the foam doesn't, it doesn't look the same. So we've got squishing the foam and we've got the wrinkling here. After that, we will have basically a variety of just little things marring the surface. We'll have grooves or dents. They kind of look like they got a little banged up or we'll have larger areas that didn't properly set. Either they leaned on something and acquired the, the texture of it. It can happen occasionally in, in storage if it's leaning on something that is an irregular form that will cause the dent. Another effect that will happen with improper storage, for instance, or improper curing is warping. Now, this one is a fairly intense version. <laughs> Typically, it's not this bad. This one, I'm pretty sure, was stored for an extended period of time in this shape. It's possible to correct this type of thing, but not always, because if the foam hardened to begin with in the wrong shape, in the drooped shape, there's nothing really to be done about it. Typically, it will be much lesser, like it'll be uh, slight. You can uh, sort of tell that there's something a little bit off, but it won't be as obvious as this. The last of the, I should say, main elements will be paint. They're not quite as bright. This will be caused either by um, a batch of paint that isn't reacting properly in these particular chemicals. They can be occasionally a little bit finicky. So this is a nice example of just the color that just isn't, it doesn't shine quite as brightly as, for instance, this one here next to it that has the same silver color, the same steel color. You can sort of tell that this one has a little bit less depth to it. Our painters will paint the weapons the same as they would be if they were premium. The, the defects are marked. They know where they are, they're able to recognize them, and they will try to hide them if they can. Uh, it's not always possible, but they do do their best to camouflage them as well as possible. Now, often when you'll just look at a weapon quickly, you won't be able to tell if it's premium or refurbished. So what we have is, and we've been doing it since the beginning, we put a mark on it to show that it is refurbished. We changed the type of mark that we put in uh, early 2020, so early last year. Currently, the mark is a stencil of our logo, but with a little R inside to say refurbished, or in French, restauré. On all the swords and the daggers, they tend to be right here, like at the base of the blade, near where it joins with the handle. Other weapons will have it on the handle near the head, so for instance, an ax or a hammer. We try to make them visible, but inconspicuous. Prior to 2020, what we used to do is we had two little tiny holes, so on the blades, it was on either side of the blade. It was typically on the mold lines. Why we changed? Um, we just like the stencil better. Refurbished products are the inevitable result of working with foam. Uh, foam is not a perfect product to work with, it's not a perfect material, but we don't set out to cause any of these flaws, which means that we only sell them when they happen to exist in our stock. We don't have them in pre-order. If they're there, they're there. If they're not, it means we've been lucky. So if you happen upon a happy accident, for you, grab it while you can because we never know when we're gonna have them again. So that about wraps things up. If you want more information, click the link in the description below. Thank you for being here and have a good one.